shit. There's fuck all to enjoy, that's why. I mean, I, I just, yeah. Pick the good points out of yesterday's game. Hello, Mark, by the way. Hello. I, say, I, I should be able to fall right into this conversation. <laughs> like uh, putting, on a, putting on a velvet... A velvet woolly warmer. Smoking jacket. Oh, thanks for that. <laughs> that's, a nice, that's, that's a nice image. And that set the tone as expected, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Come on Tottenham, stick it in the goal Come on Tottenham, the base are bloody slow You are the first team, the last team my dreams have ever seen Put on that lily white and run on to that green why our lane has seen its pain, it's at its low tonight. We fought our team through thick and thin and all those glory nights. And when the game is done, we'll sing a song and talk it out all night. Hey! Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, don't be so bloody slow, you are the first team. Hi, it's season six, episode 20 of the Tottenham Family Podcast. Joining me for the final pod of 2019, Bex from Portsmouth. Hello. Have a nice Christmas. Um, very, uh, yeah, a bit socially confused. Socially <laughs> confused. Um, and Mark from California. Hello. Hi. You had a nice Christmas. Oh, I'm glad you asked me too. Yes, and mine wasn't socially confused. <laughs> and Jav, how was your Christmas, mate? It's all right. It's all right. Um, I, I, oh. The thing I always like about Christmas is Boxing Day and the football and the football fixtures. So that's always nice. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then we played Norwich and. Brighton, and yeah, it was a bit dull and a bit shit. Um, and also, actually, having a half twelve kickoff doesn't work because in my family we do like a big thing on Boxing Day. That tends to be our big day. So Amazon, you can't record games in the same way. Yeah, you can watch it later, but it's meh. Um, um, I had we the whole family was there. And my mother really disapproves of me watching my phone <laughs> under the table. <laughs> so yeah, that was a bit tricky. I'll tell you what, about your Amazon, just digressing a bit, but I was watching some of the games on, I think, the, the Wolves and, who was it, City game, mm-hmm. and it was great, and you could do, um, you could do, you could switch off the commentary and just listen to the stadium sound. Yeah, but the oh, that commentary, is amazing. I don't think it's that bad. Sky's commentary is dog shit, but I think um, the Amazon commentary, I think it's quite... Uh, it doesn't seem to be. As oh no, not not because not because it's bad, yeah. but just for the novelty yeah, factor. Just yeah, 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 just because yeah. you can. It will soon we'll wear off. Um, right, so we'll, we'll talk about we'll get to, get to your questions and all of that. Um, we'll talk about uh, my moments of, of 2019 and, and try to remember between us um, some of the best moments and and uh, of the last decade and um, and try to put together a one to eleven of our best players right if anybody comes back and thinks that we've and, and, and complains afterwards and says we neglected a certain player or excluded somebody and we're mad uh, we don't care right it's our best 11 <laughs> right it's it's, it, it's completely subjective right and 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 it's also it's something that we we, we haven't discussed this beforehand so anyway, that's just that we talk about that f- f- um later on but um we did play two games um and it was all a little bit frustrating and we've got to talk about them. So, um, Brighton, firstly, on Boxing Day, as you mentioned, Bex, um, I thought we started off pretty shit. It felt like a continuation of a Chelsea game, and then it was a lot better better in the second half. There were a few bright sparks, and we got the three points. It's about it, really. Anybody? Yeah, I didn't get to see most of it, so um, I saw the daily goal, um, which I thought was really nicely worked, but it may well be that that was a flash in the pan considering most people's interpretation of the overall game. Mark? Yeah, it was it was turgid. I mean, we're just... Right now, we're just so slow at starting. We just literally barely... I don't know what we're doing, but we're, we're not getting going in games. Mm. And the first half was awful. Really awful. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't say any different. And the second half, we just kind of... We did enough. We... We looked better when certain players came on. I thought the Celso looked real good when he came on. He was driving forwards and playing intelligently. Ericsson. And, uh, Ericsson was just all right. I mean, he weren't terrible. He weren't brilliant either. I thought he had one of his. I thought he had one of his better games for us this season. 
which is not saying yeah. a lot. But yeah, I mean, he seems to be a little bit more relaxed as such, or mm-hmm. putting a little bit better performance. I'd say he looks like he he gives a shit as well, which is nice. But um, yeah, it just. Brighton game was just it was one of those things I, I mean Chelsea was just absolutely atrocious and uh, you know even if even if we had beaten Brighton 3-0 I don't think it would have lifted the the Blues after the Chelsea game for me and uh, yeah it just wasn't it was just a scraped win basically yeah. Straight to win. Nothing. Um, you couldn't really, but you couldn't really pick a player out for being amazing or anything, really. I mean, another way of looking at it is Brighton beat us earlier in the season three um, nil. They're okay. They're a mid mid table team, um, but and we got the three points. But but like like you say, the the the, the way we started became was was dis- disappoint disappointing. Um, I thought that I don't want to fucking talk about VAR all, all for all the pod, but I did. I did feel that the goal that was disallowed Kane's goal for me was a legitimate goal I didn't think he was offside and by the same token I didn't and we'll talk about Norwich in a bit I didn't think Pookie was offside yesterday um I know no. that I know that it would it, if you're gonna you cannot analyze it to the nth degree yeah yes, basically was, yeah we're back to millimeters mm. but I don't understand why it, VAR in its own right is a great idea but the application is massively fucking flawed and that's the problem and that's what's frustrating so many people i think because they're not paying attention if you're gonna if you're gonna do that then you you need a bit of consistency you either do it for every tackle for every challenge for every every possible infraction or you don't do it at all and i think there's no clear delineation at the moment as to when var applies and how far back it goes to declare there's an incident also, for example, yeah, there, there is an inconsistency. So, for example, Winks's tackle on the Brighton player. Now, I was too that, that led to their goal. I was too I was too far to, to, to actually see it. All I could see was Winks pro- protesting a lot, you know, which is quite unlike him. And I thought, well, hold on, there must be something not right. Otherwise, he wouldn't be protesting that much. Having seen it subsequently on TV, for me, it wasn't um, it wasn't a foul. Um, free kicks given they score that wasn't reviewed because there wasn't any element of doubt um, by the referee it wasn't a situation where he's like oh I'm not sure and it's got to go to VAR but but with every goal regardless of whether that what you know that that it's just a rule of thumb all all goals by default how far back do you take it because we had that for the Sheffield United game Mm. as well where we were lucky to come away with a draw yeah um because they had a goal disallowed that was just, oh man, they took it back like a stage of play further, and it's just bollocks. Mm. The thing is, though, is that what they're doing, what's happening now is, is we're we're setting a standard, right? So within this, so now now we're we're all saying, well, wait a minute, if Keynes was okay, then why is Pookie's not not okay, right? And things like that. So by the previous decisions are starting to become. The expectation, yeah, and they count within VAR, and that, and that, so we're 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 still slowly but surely conforming with it, right? Because we've, we've got, got no, no choice. choice, right? But um, it, it's still it's still a case of whether the referee can be asked or not, whether the referee deems it. Sometimes you know the refs get an ego and all this shit, and there's times where you know if the players have been complaining a lot about shit, they're just going to be stubborn and say no, I don't even want to look at it. And I think we had two, two possible penalties against Chelsea that we lost out on because of that too. So it's still so when it all comes down to the crunch, it still ends up being subjective. It still being ends up being the referee's decision. So why bother with it? Yeah. Why not just go back to what it was? Because it's still gonna, it, it it still narrows down to being subjective. It's either going to be subjective or we're just going to pull up for everything. And games are going to take two and a half hours, and it's going to really turn to shit. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't. I, I, I felt I didn't want to talk about VAR. We've we <laughs> ended up talking about it for a few minutes, and, and that that side of it really annoys me. Again, going back to the Amazon coverage of one of the games, I can't remember who it was, but one of the pundits said, um, "We're just talking about VAR." You know, this is this is a real shame that there was a football game played and. 
uh, and we shouldn't be really sure. But the application is different. When they trialled it for the Women's World Cup, yeah. it wasn't perfect, but you, I thought, right, okay, they're going to learn from this and they'll improve it. But it's not being done in the same way. The application isn't the same. So it means that their trial run through the World Cup was, what, for no fucking reason whatsoever? So they're making that up as they go along now in the Premier League. So, I, I mean, my thoughts on this have been, even before we introduced it, I was, you know, dead against it. And, I, and I, <laughs> if it's down, down to me, I'd bin it. But the pragmatist in me says that VAR is a bit like Brexit, whether we like it or not. It's here. It's happening. Um, it's there. And, 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 and I think what, what we can do, or, or what I would like to see, there, therefore, is that the implementation um, is more akin to for example what we saw like so the women's world cup or, or at the 2018 world cup um and that offside thing that needs to be that needs to be looked at and also the fundamentals because i think if you go back to the fan experience between the stadium the people running football should look at that and think right, what can we do to make sure that there isn't this much much sort of waiting around on a, on a decision i think it should just be clear uh-huh. You know that fans don't count, do they? No, no, of course not. For the drama side of it, they are TV companies are not interested in that, and I don't think the Premier League is either because of the money that they're getting. So it kind of it adds to the excitement. The goal is scored, and if you're a neutral, say, or if it's Mm. not your special team, then you can go, "Ooh, is it or isn't it?" It's it's an extra layer of drama. Whereas if you're a fan and it's your team that is in a, you know, like yesterday, that was a fuck. Are we going to get this or not? Because it was quite a tight game for us, and we need all the help we can get. Because apparently we're too busy shooting ourselves in the foot. Absolutely. Um, right, talking of shooting ourselves in the foot. Um, question from comment from John from John Steggles. Um, how many worst ever played halves of football can we play? And it goes on to say we look about as good as we did under Sherwood. But this. That's a bit- this, is, to Sherwood, quite frankly. <laughs> this has been the story of our season, though. Now, under under Jose, before that, under Pochettino, we've been out of sorts, and I, and I think the players, more than any anybody, need to take a long look at themselves. Well, we've changed every other thing. We've changed our manager. We've changed the way we play. So, what else is there? Where else do you look except for the players? Mm. Because they still look shit, and I don't understand how eight months ago these guys were on fire. Don't get it. Where's it all gone? And it's not as if we can say, oh, well, they, they, they're just off the back of the World Cup in the summer. They've yeah. not had a proper pre-season and they're all tired. Well, they've... Oh, the uh, yeah, exactly. They all need a slap. Well, that's that's the thing that, that's, that was worrying me, like, going into yesterday's game. I was just thinking about it. And it it's doesn't really feel much different mm. to me since since left it doesn't feel much difference and I mean with what Mourinho is doing either it's like how much patience patience are you gonna fucking have because I'm 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 done I'm I'm out of it so you should be too we can all be nice and all this kind of stuff but what's going on are these players like seriously just duping him are they just are they just two-faced is there something bigger than this going on because to have to go in we've had two big games right United and Chelsea, and both of them, we were just, we weren't even there. It was unacceptable. Like, we just didn't even look like we wanted to win. We uh, we almost looked like we he's instilled too much confidence in them. I don't know what it is, but it's not good enough. It's absolutely not good enough. And when are we going to change this? When are we going to properly change this and just make some proper cuts and say, look, we're done? We made those changes yesterday. And it still didn't work. Mm. Looked slightly better, though. I thought Lamella, when he came on, looked as fiery as ever. I'm not sure he would have played much longer than he did. But you, you, um, you've even got, you've Eric's even got players like... marginally better, but Kane was super quiet. Well, the ball didn't get to him, no, because we, yep. we kept getting to the edge of the box and farting around. Right? I mean, but... Even players like Sissignon in the last couple of games, he came in with all this energy and all this stuff, and it's like he's caught the disease now. He yeah. didn't have much confidence uh, yesterday, did he? I, on Sessignon, I thought that when he played against Brighton, um, there were little things. He didn't. He, he came off, and I think that, that, that 
Mourinho felt that ch- ch- change needed to be made, and and he was the, he just happened to be the player that, that, that came off. Um, I thought he started off okay against Brighton. I thought I looked at him and I thought three things I can see there. I can see somebody who's technically good, somebody who wants the ball, and someone who's got good movement off the ball. And he seemed to have a little bit of understanding with with with, with Delhi. You could see it early on, little one two thrown in there, and then it sort of all died down. And anyway, and then he came off. And yesterday, I wasn't that Im- impressed with him overall. But it's only what his second full start in the league. Yesterday, and he's a young man, so I can sort of give him the benefit of the doubt. But oh, it's, I'm it's, not, it's, I'm not it's, right. No, 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 of course not. No, 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 no. I, it, but it's more the other players, really, the ones that you expect more from them, and and the, it just, just, it's just like a catalogue of mistake after mistake. And you mentioned the two, and, gone, yeah, like, and an inability to pass to your own team. Mm. How the fuck is? How can that not happen? How is that so badly wrong? That we can't even pass a ball consistently, like three or four passes. We just, for some reason, we just don't seem able to do it. Why? Confidence. that's my problem. Yeah, but what the fuck? This is what these guys do day in, day out. They kick a ball. So how is it impossible to kick to that person over there when that's your day job? And that's why I don't understand what the fuck is going on with these players. Whatever the... the, um, um whatever the issue um, I think that Poch when he was there he could see it long before anybody else and he talks about a painful, re- painful rebuild etc um, so it's, I think it's something that's been there all season new person comes in Jose comes in um, the problem with that is you've got yes you've got a different voice that players might respond to initially and there might be that bit of a bounce but he's got his own set of ideas so he's going to take time for him to suddenly say right we're going to play this way we're going to we're not going to pass out the back we're going to be a little bit more direct etc we're going to be a bit more in people's faces that's going to take time as well as all the underlying issues which whatever the causes that are whether that's just staleness or complacency or, or whatever all the all the things that sort of Pochettino hinted at about we need a refresh we need to rebuild he's now it's just been the, the baton's been passed to fix the shit to somebody else and uh, it's, it's going to be a long hard season I, th- I think as well as those two games the ones that the United and the um, Chelsea one I think yesterday for me was a big match because we went into that playing at 5.30 before Chelsea before Wolves before United who, play, who had the 8 o'clock kickoff, knowing that if we'd won the match we'd move into 4th place put the pressure on the teams around us what do we do? Draw. Scraped a draw. Yeah. And okay, Norwich have Norwich have taken some scalps this season against some good teams, but they are still bottom of the table. This is you're somebody gonna, you're, but you Norwich are one of those teams that are gonna try and play football and you're gonna get chances against them. One hundred percent. And we didn't create any chances against them either. Really, did we? Not no. enough. I, not enough. A couple here and there, but it wasn't enough. Mm. I mean after we got the first goal. We we had a little five to ten minute spell where it was like, oh, here we go. We're, the, we've kind of got our confidence and we're sort of passing the ball around quicker and a, and no, everybody wasn't needed, you know, four or five touches before they released it. It just like, okay, now we're, we're going. And then it just died and went back to how it was. Hmm. We had a question from... Uh, a comment from um, Gilly who just says um, we did we did create a couple of chances early on versus Norwich City and and also scored um, early versus Wolverhampton Wanderers a few weeks ago but we've consistently been outrun outpassed outmaneuvered um, first half in the last four games home and away given we've the master tactician in charge what gives nothing <clears throat> nothing's giving something's got to give nothing yeah my my patience because that game yesterday was really hard to watch it was really hard to keep my focus and not go oh uh, i don't know i should go and like do the dishes or i'll walk the dog because it wasn't going to make any difference whatsoever to the, the end result it was boring to watch i don't know how it was if you were there i can't imagine it was any more exciting no it wasn't but, uh, but they've got to pick that up but before the game before the game looking at that lineup and and Working out the formation, I was pretty excited yeah. to see the game. Mm-hmm. So, well, this looks like a creative team. 
It also so how long was like... it before you just gave right. it all up as it was? Not, not, not <laughs> long, not long at all, but, you know, it did. And it, you also looked at it and you thought, okay, well, this will solve... This will solve um, the midfield being dragged back to go cover Oreo because he'll have a natural, you know, helper there to help him out. And um, it weren't no different. I mean, we we took a risk because Ndombele and Ericsson together, they ain't defensive midfielders between them, are they? Really, they're not going to... Ericsson's known for not tackling and Ndombele's still kind of learning and wants to go forwards. There was just nothing. Mm. It was just nothing. It was just dead. That first half was pretty disappointing. I actually missed the first goal because my bladder was bursting. So um, I'm doing what you do, and do it, I'm doing what you do, and then I just hear this almighty roar, and I was like, "Oh shit, we've scored! I've missed it!" And then, but but then then I could hear the roar, and I was like, "No, that's 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 their goal." Um, I, I subsequently saw it on on the replay on on the in 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 the um. Uh, on the big screens a bit later, yeah. I think at half time. What the fuck was Foyth doing? What He's was he a doing? Child. He needs. He, they can't put him into these games again. Sure, unless he is absolutely outstanding in training. But time and again, you're like, dude, you're in the wrong place again. This isn't a one off. This is like a habit I, now. I've got. Well, he, 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 he did that. He did that, and then like five less than five minutes later, he's like doing really well and taking the ball for the defender and and running clear and and doing what you want him to do. And there's a there is a player there. There's a very talented player there, but he's just he is not understanding that you will not get time on the ball in England. You do what you need to do, and you get rid of it. You know, and he's. He, he hasn't learned, and I don't think he ever will. Is he our um, David Luiz? But we've got Aurier for that. <laughs> we don't need that yeah. one, surely. Yeah. Um, I, I really feel for Foyth because I like him. I like the player. And this might sound mm-hmm. a, bit, a bit sensational, but um, I think his first career is done. I really do. It, I've, I've, it I've, wouldn't I've, surprise me. But I think there's a player. I really agree with you, Mark. I think there's a player there, but I just think that um, he could go. He could go to Italy and be a superstar. Yeah, I, I do, truly believe that. He's this never the way they play because they yeah. don't play so quickly as we do. Yeah. So they will give him time to do whatever he likes. But it's just like it's really frustrating. Mm. Well, well, let's let's take that let's take that little bit of frustration for Foy. <laughs> And then uh, now let's now let's now let's talk about Oria. Let's talk but, let's talk about Oria, who never you know, Jose makes these subs when it ain't working, but Oria always sees the game out, right? Uh, he was he was the worst I've seen him yesterday. Truly, um, the I worst mean, I've do, seen him. Do, do we have a but before we talk about Oria? Do, do, um, do we have any other? Just, just want to establish this. Do, is there an alternative to to not playing Serge? Because I look, you look at the squad, and there isn't really another right back unless you play play Foyth there. And I think part of the part part, part part of the other issue with Foyth is he's he's. I mean, he's six foot one, which is great, but he's he does look small, even though he's not. He's got a small frame about him, and he just gets bullied on the on on the ball. But maybe maybe that's a solution: play him at right back instead of Aria. Or do well, we not I mean, have a? Just, just yeah. put somebody there. Just put somebody there and say, "Look, just play right back." I, I just need you to play right. I don't want you to go forwards or anything. Just you know, stay within the lines, follow the lines with the other guys, and that's it. I just need a solid right back. Thing is, if you put him as right back, then he's on his own. If you leave him in the yeah. centre, he's got somebody who should be able to cover for him. But right back is. He's going to have to know that position inside out, or he's going to get turned. Mm. And but he's going to fuck thing, up. The, and the he's thing going is, to be out of position. the thing is too is we also had Aurea on the right, and then we had Foyt behind him. Why couldn't Foyt play in the middle and put Toby on the right behind uh, Aurea? Toby and Jan don't like that, do they? I'm guessing that might have been an option when Jan came off. Yeah. You know. 
We've, I mean, we, we, there, there are, if you consider Dyer, we've got a few players who can play in right back, but it's not their natural p- 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 uh, position. Dyer, out of Arrow's played there for Belgium. Again, he doesn't probably particularly like it, and he's taking something away from the middle. For if there was this um, suggestion at the beginning of the season by Poch that that, that, that he might play him there. Um, and of course, we've, you know, we've got some, but another right back in the squad, Carl Walker Peters, who, I don't know, I, I don't. Uh, I just I don't ever think he's been given a consecutive run of games. I think there was a few games he started this season where he did look a bit shaky, but fuck me, he can't be any worse than Serge, can he? Well, that's 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 the big thing, right? It's like he can't get any worse. Even if it's bad for one game, hopefully the second game it'll be it'll improve, right? We're desperate for a right back. If we don't buy a right back quick time within the first ten days of January, I'll be shocked. And so every, every selling club should damn well know we need at least one right back. What's funny is if you're a, if you're in if you're another club and you're in the market for right back, right? And if we put surgery at the transfer market, <laughs> you wouldn't buy him unless you're West Ham, unless you're crazy, and and you know. Uh, oh, he's get... just the player that David Moyes would love as well, don't you yeah. think? Uh, you, wow. you may you may laugh your ass off. But there's, still t- there's still time for a Chinese league team to come in and offer him four hundred thousand pounds a week and pay us, you know, thirty five, forty million. million. For him. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> Kent, Kent, question from Kent Goodrich or comment. He just says a case against Serge. Number one, his Egyptian hi- hieroglyphic beard. Two, his own goal today, yesterday. Even three, dumb concession of a corner and not closing. For Chav's goal. Four, he tracks back when he feels like it. Five, he's a red card waiting to happen. Six, he's a penalty waiting to happen. I'm, I'm going to add to that. Seven, his foul froze. Um, yep. Eight, uh, yesterday, yesterday, I don't know if either of you noticed, but um, second half, but I was particularly probably more aware of it because I was nearer that side of the goal. Um, but the back four, so Ceci, at that point, Session, Alvaro, Sanchez, and um, our dear friend Serge. The other three, right, they're stepping up. They're trying to. They've they've got an offside trap, and and who is all the way deep and playing Pookie or, or whoever um, on side? Surge. Not once, not twice. He, his his concentration just isn't there. It's awful, awful. Did you see? Did you see how many times he just blindly passed or headed the ball back across our penalty area, or uh, you know, uh, back out into the middle of the pitch as well? Panicked. Oh, like just get rid of it. So that's the contrast, isn't it? Between Aurier, who panics and just seems to think, it doesn't matter so long as I get this ball away from me, like it's on fire, and Foyth, who thinks that he has a little bit more time, between the two of them, we've probably got a decent player. Mm. It's just unfortunate that it's not. And that we've got both of them. Lucky us. Would it, would a blow-up doll be Champions League eligible? Because it could come at that. Depends on, de- depends on the nationality. Is it homegrown? <laughs> Is it, is Erotica it? style. <laughs> <laughs> That's the pod title. Um, <laughs> um, oh, great! So one of the one of the one of the I thought one of the few shining lights from yesterday's game. Lamelo obviously mentioned that Bex. Be- so I thought he, he, you know, he did well when he came on. Um, but second half in particular, um, I thought D- Don Bele had a good game. I thought it was a little bit quiet first half, um, but he, he grew with confidence. Second half, um, another one from Kent Goodrich. He says, for me, it's clear Dombele is top class. Um, just need a decent defensive midfielder beside him and watch him go. Ses- he goes on to say, Session and um, Lo Celso, I'm less convinced by. Session shows flashes of potential, but he's young and needs games so far too soon to decide if he can put it. And then Lo Celso, I feel... I feel was to be uh, Christian Eriksen's replacement, but looks a long way from that. But again, it's early for him. What are the panel's thoughts on those three players at the halfway point? This also is another kind of lamella type, isn't he? And for like we were saying, very slight build. Mm. So does tend to get bullied. And Lamella's got around it by being a lot of a twat, which is great to watch, don't get me wrong. Um, because he will kick out if he thinks that he needs to and then proclaim innocence. But I don't think Lascelles is that kind of player. I think he's much more of a flair player. He'll play super, super nicely if he gets the chance. But I don't think the Premier League is that place. And you have to be something really special to be able to get away with that. I like Lascelles. I think he could be a real tidy good player for us. I, 
you know, it's, it's, it is early. He hasn't had a, consi- a real consistent run of games. It'd be nice to see him start again this week. Actually start two games in a row and be given the opportunity. But um, I think he could be a good player for us. I think, mm. like I said, I think it's too early. I think he's, there's class about him. When he came on against Brighton, he was driving forwards and looking good. I mean, he's not playing. None of them are playing in a good team and a cohesive team playing well right now so it's very difficult to judge them really either mm. you be asking a lot to ask any of them to sort of drive us forwards they all scored on their debut right um mm-hmm. Cessigno, i think will be fine i think he'll be fine he'll be a good player mm. I, i'm not too keen on this i don't understand this mentality of he can't be a left back yet that just don't i don't quite understand why We've had two managers say that because for me, it's, it, I would just put him in, put him in there now. We need it, and and stop making Yan suffer and look worse. Yeah. Uh, um, and on Ballet, I think the jury's out on him. I, he's, I, I have no idea why he's got such fitness issues, but he does. I mean, his legs look tired as hell yesterday. There were so many passes that were just slow, like he. Had, his legs were totally heavy. Um, also, decision making, I think, um, not the best. He tends to want to hold on to the ball a little bit too much at times, but I fully agree with if he gets a really good defensive midfield partner that's more willing to sit back and, and sweep and allow him to go forward, he could be a really good player. Yeah, no, I, I think. <clears throat> You're both right. I mean, but I think all three players need need time. I think the, the what you said about not being in a cohesive te- team and a team that's not doing well doesn't doesn't help. Um, I thought I I I sort of half agree with what you said about Don Belly, Mark. I just think the second half he he was a lot better. There was a player there. First half he did frustrate me a bit. The fitness stuff does concern me. I mean, Mourinho said before the or no before or after the Brighton game. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, right, yeah. Oh, one of those, one of those, right? Yeah, no. yeah. Um, but he had fitness issues, and 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 he, the player wasn't injured, but didn't feel that he was. He was fit worried enough. about a previous injury or some shit, right? So, but that's I've I've heard that a few times before. I remember um, when Lamella had his hip injury when he was out for a full twelve months. When he was coming back and he was training, and and just before he sort of came on, I think he appeared. Came off the bench against Leicester in a midweek game, which we lost away from home. Um, I remember prior to that, Poch saying, "Look, it's, it, now it's a bit of a mental thing because at the back of his mind, he's got that you know fear of getting injured again." I've, I've heard that about other players, um, and uh, they, they often need to work with psychologists sometimes just to get them in the right mental frame of mind. So it, it might be, it might just be a mind over matter thing. Um, we look at it in terms of well, you know, they're paid this much and they're professionals and they're fully fit. And but they're, they're human beings, and you know, I've if I haven't done a particular like aspect of my job, for example, in a long time, if there's something, some something that I do at work which I haven't done for a very long time, and I come back to or I'm asked to do that thing I'm always a little bit naturally I'm always a little bit hesitant a little bit you know the confidence confidence isn't there it's a bit like akin to a kid trying to jump in the pool for the first time and, and they're sort of sticking their toes in the water and it, and it might just be a mental thing um, and, I, and I think once he breaks that barrier and breaks that psychological issue and starts playing more and more games the confidence will come and, and it'll just seem natural and he won't even think about whether he's going to get injured or not, he'll just think about what he's got to do, which is to go out there and, and play football and enjoy football. Um, it depends on it. if he's allowed to pick and choose which games he wants to play. It depends on your, on how he feels. Yeah. Do you remember? I know we we're going to talk about this about, about later, but Aaron Lennon. There used to be a time when he would allegedly miss games, or um, I think there was a game, a Champions League game, where he, apparently he was sick. Um, there was a lot of talk at the time that he was sort of picking and choosing games and he wasn't in the right state. I wonder if it's, you know, th- these things happen um, but with footballers. Well, he, yeah. he had some other sort of mental issues in the end True. as well. Yeah, He yeah. yeah. was kind of, you know, he, he struggled here and there yeah. with that kind of stuff. So Yeah. I mean, he was absolutely thrilled when he signed for Everton, I remember. So. Absolutely. He looked like the best day of his life. 
Um, if given it is the halfway point of the season, um, very briefly, if you were going to mark us down at the halfway point, um, what, how would you grade us? Good lord, somewhere around a D or an E. Hmm. Disappointing, really disappointing all round. Because there isn't anybody that you really think has stood out so far this season. Gaz and has no. been good. It's been a shambles, really. Yeah. It's been a shambles. I mean, start. Did you grade to them any higher? I, I was I was going out of ten, and then you had to do the oh, school okay, thing. Sorry. Yeah, um, did... I, I was gonna. Yeah, I was gonna do a four, four out of ten, three or a four. Okay. Well, I'm gonna be all. Aw- I'm gonna be awkward, and I'll go back to the school thing. I'm gonna give them a C. Um, yeah. and I think that optimist. yeah and I, but I think that I think the potential is there for us to do you know first drop was a strange game suddenly you know, we're, still in, we're still in the Champions League last 16 we're in the FA Cup best case scenario we could win two trophies shock horror mm-hmm. and finish top top four that, that is a possibility with the players we've got but then you watch games like yesterday and and you just see us just shoot ourselves in the foot, and then you think, "Fuck it, it's not." It, but it's, it's there. The scope we can do it. The potential is there. But whether we, right. whether you know, if it, if it was a child and you're doing a school report, whether they'd fulfil that potential, or whether they just continue in the same vein, well, remains to be seen. But yeah, but this is ha- also pretty much the same team that got beaten by Colchester. Yeah. So really, so- ups and downs, and got smacked by Bayern at home embarrassingly so really I think what's clear you're very optimistic but we'll see yeah I think what's clear is there will be a bit of a clear out I think come the summer I think you know Jose will just look at it and he will be ruthless and I think there'll be one or two players who who won't be there bring some new players and we've only got to hope that things improve quickly because I the one thing that really annoys me as a football as a Spurs fan it's not the lack of trophies. Of course, that hurts, um, and uh, you know, bragging rights with it. It's the fact that we've had so many transitions, so many false storms over the last certainly odd thirty years. That I've been sporting, but, but even when we think it's going well, it's been oh shit! Suddenly, Klinsman wants to go. So oh, so and so manager Venables loses his job. Redknapp loses his job, etc. Another player, Ginola gets sold whatever stop start stop 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 start and the only time that i felt like hold on we've got some stability we're actually doing okay we're keeping our keeping our top players was under poch i think over a four year period from about 2015 to now if you look at it the only key players that we lost in that period were carl walker musa dembele kieran trippy i'm starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel here and probably based on some of his heroics last season, um, Lorente. Um, I'm not going to include Mason and, say, Chadley, who did, who did well for SA initially under, under Poch. But aside from the ones I've mentioned, and, and the Dembele one was sort of inevitable because his body was breaking down, he was prone to injuries. We kept the likes of the Harry Canes and the Hugo Larises and the Ericsons and the Sons and the Delis and all of these players. And we kept the manager and we kept finishing somewhere in the top four. And I thought, great, we've got a period of stability. And, okay, decision's been made, new manager comes in, but it's like, are we going for another transitional period again? I don't, I'm I'm, I'm sick and tired of it. Well, that's the thing, I agree with you about, you know, it's not all about the trophies. The worst thing for me is that just, we're just not fucking entertaining to watch. We don't look like we want to win games. We just don't look. We look like we're just oh, it's going to happen, kind of thing, and just keep plugging away. And that's the worst thing for me. Our, our fucking shit we are to watch now because we're awful. Mm. How many? I'd like to know how many, how many chances we've created this season at this point in the season compared to the past two or three seasons. I'm sure there's quite a glaring. Uh, there must be difference. a big drop off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we used to be winning games and, and saying, fuck, mate, that could have been six or seven, right? Yeah. Like, we just, Spurs were relentless. Spurs just kept pouring forwards. And it's a distant but yesterday memory. was not 
we used to yeah we used to feel we used to feel you know we we felt this bond with the players we liked everybody in our team pretty much you know and 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 now you know we would we would find it hard to lose any of these players because you know there was such a bond between the fans and the players and now there aren't many players in that team right now that I'd actually be bothered if they went that's how uh, bad it is because I just don't see it from them it's like they've switched off yeah they don't seem they don't seem afraid for their place either I don't know I think you're right I think certainly if your name is Serge, you're guaranteed a, a place in the in the starting eleven. Um, uh, maybe he's got dodgy not... photos of something. <laughs> right, um, we're, we're saying Trippier's bottom of the barrel. And you've still got right Sergio. now he's looking really fucking good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I, I did <laughs> as, as bad a season as Trips did had last season. I did think it was at the time, even before we sold him, I thought it would be a mistake to sell him ahead of Serge. And worse still, not to not get a right back in the summer. I don't care if you're talking about converting um, Foyth into a right back, or this player, and this player, or that player. There should have been some. We should have got somebody in. Um, and I think I think oh, Ser- absolutely. I think Serge, Serge was the lesser of the two right backs. Um, very briefly, we've got Southampton on New Year's Day. We've got them in the next decade, um, and uh, feeling confident about that. No, <laughs> did not surprise. I tell you, the only thing, the only what is this? What is this feeling confident myth? How does that work? Explain this to me. It, it, I'm not getting it at all. Well, I'm. I was quite. So the only crumb of comfort, crumb of comfort I've got this morning. Um, a chap called uh, Ray Hunt, Southampton fan, who I was on their podcast. Yeah. Um, oh, when the Spurs pod. No, oh, when the Thanks. fucking hell. Oh, when the uh, uh, whatever it's called. Um, sorry, Ray. Uh, I think it was. I think it's called. Was it oh, when the Saints? It must be. Oh, it must be. Oh, when the Saints or the Saints go marching Probably. in or something like that. Right. I think. Um, it's, I think it's called. Oh, you're not going to get invited back. I oh, probably won't. No, no, Ray, Ray's been really helpful because I was asking him about parking space today. Anyway, so I messaged him today, asking him about parking space and all of that, and uh, I was just telling him that I'm, I'm actually quite worried. He said, you'll be fine. You'll probably beat us because we're crap at home. So... That's the only yeah, but what I've you've got. got to remember is, is da- they've got Danny Ings, who right now has probably got more assists from the opposition defence or goalkeepers than any oh, other excellent. player. Because so, we are likely to give him a good, what, uh, at least a brace, if not a hat trick for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Ah, I don't know. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, just got a couple of questions I w- w- want to just quickly get through, and then then we'll, we'll we'll try to reflect back on the last twelve months and ten years even. Um, firstly, Kent Goodrich, another one from him. More steaming, po- more steaming hot piss from VAR. Disgraceful disallow that Norwich goal. Would you take losing today three two or yesterday even if VAR fucks off? VAR can't fuck off though without leaving football well behind and I know the three of us have had this very public mm. conversation when they first mooted um, that VAR was coming in but I, I think like we said before I still think it's the application of it yeah. that is the problem not having it as a system Okay, Mark? I ain't fucking taking a defeat if no other team is. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I would like it to fuck off, but as I said earlier, I'm, I'm the pragmatist in me knows that it's not going to. So um, I'll, I don't want to lose three two. Um, and uh, it just needs to be improved. It's not going to go away. It just needs to be improved. Um, Andy Island, um, Twitter analyst at a Island eighty six. If you could take one positive from the year and one negative to improve on, what would they be, and where will Spurs finish come at the end of the season? So, actually, good point, really, to reflect back on calendar year 2019. Um, what, what were your best and worst moments of the year from a Spurs perspective? I'm not talking about anything else that may be going on in your lives. <laughs> the RX game. Because you can't yeah. top that. Mm-hmm. Mark? Uh, just the Champions League run. Yeah. Every game, every game this year in the Champions League, aside from the final, I mean, was fantastic. And there weren't, uh, honestly, we may have scored some nice goals in the Premier League, but 
I can't think of any Premier League game that stood out this calendar year for mm. me. It, the the last one was probably Everton, and that was in December, right? Yeah, the yeah. six two. Yeah, no, I mean you can't really get, you can't really top the Ajax game. I think I think the City game um, before it was good in the Champions League. Oh, the Dortmund game. The Dortmund, Dortmund game as well. Yeah, yeah. That was amazing. Um, and I think, I think getting to the final itself, and I, I was really much being in Spain for the final. I was really emotional on the day. There were two points where I just, well, one point where I was on on the morning of the final, where I just. I, did want to sort of break out in tears and I was holding myself back and then later on in the stadium um, I met a few people and we were chatting and again I was getting very emotional and it felt to me that was just the everything like being a Spurs fan yeah everything everything. that was it not fuck Spurs just life that was it that was the highest point everything everything my whole life had been building up to that point and then we go and fuck it up um Sissoko sticks his hand out and we know how it finished oh, I'm not blaming Sissoko but um the Ajax game though that was I mean that just oh, every time I how watch that goal that? you just oh it's just it's it's just great and as for worst moments um Bye. for Bayern okay Mark? No, uh, you know, uh, the Bayern game don't bother me. It don't bother me at all. It might have been a big score, but it was Bayern. I, I would take I'd take losing to some of the shitty, like losing to Newcastle, worse than that, personally. Mm. And Bayern, everything about that Bayern game, I and mean, shit, every time they, they shot a goal at the end, it was just going in. It was just one of those games for them, too. But um, worst, worst moments is really difficult. Really difficult. Because there's been too many. That Brighton defeat. Um, Champions like said, the League che- final, the Colchester Champs- game, the Leicester game. The Chelsea the Chelsea yeah. and United performances. Um, Burnley. Burnley. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Fucking Danny Rose's comments was a real low point for me. I cannot believe he's still at the club. Which comments? He his does com- talk a lot, so it could be anything. Well, his his recent comments about oh, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna see my contract out and just just basically just showing no gratitude for the club at all, and mm. and just the way he is, and we just we just seem to have accepted that. Uh, I, mean, I just found it as a club. I found it really embarrassing that one of our players would have the balls to come out and say that, and and he's not. And he's somebody who grew up at the club too. That I'd rather he told the worse. truth than lied. I'd rather he just kept it to himself or just went. Do you not think maybe whatever Danny Rose says is in is indicative of a larger problem with the players? Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me. I still questioned last week Toby getting a new contract because as far as I'm concerned, there ain't one player in our squad that deserves a new contract based on this season I mean that's not exactly saying your team's doing shit is it oh there you go we, we can agree a contract now we want to keep you it seems a little bit backwards I think for me the worst moment was losing Poch um, simply because even if you even if you're of the mindset that it was inevitable, or you know we're in a results in base industry and and it had to go, and he had to go and and etc. Um, I think what he achieved at Spurs, what he did, the bond he built, the fans and him and the players and the group of players, I think that was unless you you know unless you're of the mindset that you just completely potch out and fine, in which case that's you know that you make your bed and you sleep in it. But I think you can't but feel sad I, you know even even if you felt it was the right thing at that time ultimately i think you can't but felt but feel sad that it, it's it, oh, yeah. it's it's the end of an era and i think that was sad and and as for one thing to one negative to improve on fucking just play better and win games simple as that really that's what that's what i'd like in 2020 i'd like i'd like whatever you know whatever uh, bad Vibes or juju or whatever you want to call it, just running around the club, just to stop just and the players to yeah, and and for players to, and for us to see that the camaraderie, the spirit that was there before, all those things, you know, the the 
Delhi's celebrations and his little lovings with Dyer and all of the things, all of the, the fun aspects of it. I, I don't want it to be Spurs media, social media, just putting out shit just manufactured. I want it to be, I want the players to be happy and to feel happy and for that to then be reflected in the way we play and the results. That's what I'd like out of 2020. Uh, I, I mean, I agree. It was, it was definitely a low point. I've never been, never been so gutted when a manager went. But you know, it was the right time. But if you asked me, if you said to me, would you rather lose Potch or if you knew ha- which players were the problem and you could get rid of all of them, what would you choose? I would choose to get rid of the players because one hundred percent, there's players. They there last that, forever. That there's players there that screwed screwed him over mm. each, and I believe they're screwing Jose over too he's putting mm. faith in these players and they're just not cutting it and not bothered ok let's um, let's finish off by looking back at the last decade um, if we can um, so firstly uh, quick fire thing, best player of the last decade best Spurs player Kane ok Mark yeah um yeah, Kane. Yeah, yeah, Kane. Um, I got a soft spot for Bale, what he did, but Kane, the longevity, etc. Um, best, uh, whatever comes in your mind, really. <laughs> best, best games, moments, goals, even from the last decade. So I just thought about this. Yes, I said like my best game was I act yada yada. Tiny little thing. Forgot about the new stadium. Mm-hmm that I think was a really massive thing for the club as a whole. And whilst we're focusing on the games itself, I don't think we should overlook what else has been going on around the club. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, it's just a cloud, isn't there? That's the problem. There's such a cloud now, we're forgetting. There's, yeah. more, there's more negative than positive, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm. Any... Any particular matches, goals over that period that um, stand out? Uh, the 5 3. The Chelsea, Chelsea game. Um, the, yes, battle of the, the Battle of the Bridge, even yep. though. Oh, it, dear God, screwed, yeah. Even, yeah, I, no, I that don't was care. I awesome. loved it. I think yeah. it was iconic. I think it was iconic, yeah. but it was painful as well. I loved it. I was so proud, so gutted, but at the same time, so proud. And we got away with so much fuckery. It was brilliant. <laughs> and go back and watch it again and again. Watch the clips yep. of Dyer. <laughs> yeah. And, and I tell you, I tell you that we've also, I think during the course of this decade, I think we've we've broken West Ham's hearts with late winners, our last minute goals, at least three or four times. Mm. And that's been that's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Bale did it. Dyer did it. We did two late, what, two late goals in the last game at the lane. Just, just Winks' good. first goal at the old lane. Yeah, against yeah, West Ham. Yeah, yeah. You you were there that one? I, I was, I, I, and that's why I mentioned it because I know you were there too. Yeah. Um, yeah, and things like. Bale's hat trick at the San Siro was that 2010? That, that was 2010. Yeah, it's 2010. There you go. So very early in the decade. Yep. And and the return game as well. I think when when it was uh, taxi for Mike. My God, he was <laughs> piss poor. Yeah. What was yeah. good about what was good about that was like, you know, the first game was just unbelievable, and the second game everybody was just hoping that it would happen again, and it did. Right. It did. And, and it he just took just him apart. Pitch, was it? It was um, the uh, Joe Jordan uh, Gattuso fight as well, mm. wasn't it? Yeah. God, some good memories. Um, I'm trying to think what. So we've obviously got the the, the the obvious, yeah, the Ajax game and the City game from the Champions League run. I like the some memorable moments from from the last ten years. Um, Crouch's goal against Man City. The header, the one that not, took us not, into the Champions yeah, League. Yeah, not not the own goal, obviously a year later, but the one that took us to the Champions <laughs> League. That that was, I mean, that that was a moment of occasion because suddenly we are in the top table of, of you know that. Well, it was uh, a pre- it was a pressure game. What was it like yeah. a Wednesday night? Yeah. It was yeah. away yeah. away from home. It was End we were literally season. whoever won that game would make yep. it. It was between us. It was like a final. 
Mm. Yeah. Th- there were a couple of games leading up to that in in that run towards the end of that 2009-10 season under Harry. Um, when we beat, we had I think we'd lost. Oh fuck! Here's a here's a bad moment from the last decade. And um, we lost to. We just I think we just lost to Pompey in the FA Cup semi final the weekend. Ugh. And then we had two league games and the only thing we had we had was trying to get fourth at this point. Um we had two league games. One in the middle of the week was against Arsenal in the North London Derby at uh, the lane and we won that two 0 as I recall and Danny Rose scored a fantastic but, goal. Yeah, his debut. Yep. And then there was then we played Chelsea a few days later. And we beat them, I think, 2-1. And Bale scored in that one. I think he scored in the in the North London derby as well. So they were moments that the games in the San Siro. Crouch's goal in the... Sorry, sorry the, yeah, the moments in the San Siro that you mentioned, the Bale hat-trick, but also Crouch's goal against Milan. Um, yeah, that right run very Lennon. Yeah, yeah Lennon. Um, I'm trying to think. There, there, there were lots of... There, there were lots of um, I don't the know. Win squ- o- the win over Madrid in the Champions League. Yeah, yeah, more recently, yeah. It was a lot of squash the buckling draw with football. Barcelona. <laughs> oh, yeah. Last yeah, December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what, well, what about just the end to the 16 17 season when we were just on fire scoring goals left, right, and centre? That whole season, but that final game at White Hart Lane, I think yep. that, that really stands out for me. That was just an emotional occasion. Um, it was just, mm-hmm. it was special. It was just really the atmosphere and all the songs. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think. There must be. There must be more. But um, I'm struggling to think of, of games under notable games under AVB. Um, there were lots of bail bail goals. I remember in, in that time. Um, yeah, but the one that you remember from that is the West Ham goal. The West Ham it? one. That's yeah. when he went over, went straight over to AVB. Um, Andy Andy was the man that went 24 games playing for Tottenham without a win, mm. and then suddenly sprung into life. Mm-hmm. Those going back to that sixteen seventeen season, right at the very end, when we had those, I think we we just beaten United and qualified for, and, and sorry, and finished second. We secured second highest finish in the sixty degree. Great way to go, unbeaten. And then we had two matches, which which were effectively dead rubbers. Leicester on a Thursday night, been rearranged, and then Hull on the Sunday away from home. And I think we scored six and seven goals in those games, yep. and that yep. was just unbelievable as well. Um, and I, those those two seasons under. But Posh's second and his third season in particular, um, for, you know, the Chelsea season we're chasing Leicester and the 16-17 were good. I'm struggling to think there must be sub moments under Tim Sherwood that were memorable. The gilet yeah, when, he, the... Yeah, when he fucks off. <laughs> when he fucks off, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't, um, his first game didn't that give uh, West Ham a hat trick over beating us that season? Yeah, yeah. Because we you know... absolutely fucking threw it away. Here's a trivia question for you, both of you. Do you know who his first league match was against? And it was around about six years ago this time. Who's? Sherwood? Yeah, Sherwood, sorry. Sorry, Sherwood, yeah. His first league match was against? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When he was manager? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Villa? No. Because the only thing I can think of is West Ham, but I thought that was a cup match. Yeah, it's a cup match. Yeah, but but after that first league oh. game, oh. it was against Southampton. Southampton, managed by Maurizio Pochettino. Um, didn't we win three two? I think something like that. Yeah. Adebayor, come on! Adebayor scored two goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, let's finish off finally with our. This is going to be a difficult one. So our, our this is going to be our, our one to eleven. No oh, subs. Geez. Fuck that. Um, over the last decade, so let let let, let it be a collective effort. So if we if we go with goalkeeper first, so we've got a choice of Gomez, Friedel, Lloris. I'm not going to mention anybody else like Kudacini, etc. Are we all going for Lloris? Mm. Yeah, you've got. Geez, no. It's, yeah. <laughs> we got we got we got no choice really. He's played Such okay. far right. far and away the most games. Okay, so Hugo in goal, right? And then a back four. Should we just go, just keep it simple, go with a back four? Mm-hmm. All right, so right back, we've got a choice of Alan Hutton, Kyle Walker, <laughs> um, Chorluka. I can't think of anybody at trip here, perhaps. Sergio Ria. 
<laughs> if if you if you had asked this question in the previous decade, you would have had, we bought about seventeen right backs. Chimbonda, Chimbonda in the previous when decade. Redknapp was there, so appreciate this is a little bit easier. Yeah. Well, of the ones I've mentioned that come to mind, so Hutton, Chorluka, Kyle Walker, Sergio Trippier. Much as it annoys me, because I'm still really pissed about what how how we left. Um, Kyle Walker for me, I think. Okay, Kyle Walker, Mark. Yeah, Kyle Walker, and and I'll I'll say this too. I mm-hmm. reckon that City are going to out Walker in the summer, and I would take him back. Hmm. Okay. Mm. I yeah all right so by the way the way this works right if we if there's any disagreement amongst us then oh do you get the be, casting vote uh no but well it'll be two to it'll be it'll be majority decision so it'll be two to okay. three okay okay right um le- left back now we might have to revisit this and there's a reason why depending on um, the answer that you give so the choices would be uh, Benoit Sarkoto, um Danny Rose um. Uh, ben Davis, um, and I'm going to throw in Jan Vertonghen in the in the mix. No bail. Mm, no, well, bail mm. will be further up. We'll, we'll okay. for him for... And I didn't mention Carl Norter in Carl Norter in either right or left back options. I know that might come as a disappointment to some listeners, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> oh, damn. Maybe. Damn. <laughs> <Bugger>. <laughs> So I would pick Davis, okay, because I like Davis. I think Davis is a more solid left back. He was also in the team and our our run at the end of the sixteen seventeen season. I think he's better at that position, basically. Mm-hmm. And but I will say that B A E As Asuakoto. Was is a lot better player than most Tottenham fans give credit for. He had a great partnership with Bale, scored some nice goals, could, could put in a, a good cross. And I think his comments about you know football just being a job was um, really weighed on weighed on him a lot. And fans never forgot it because you know any time he made a mistake, and he did make some mistakes, um, you know everybody just immediately pointed to that comment, but. He was he was a good left back too, I think. Yeah. And he, he was injured for a long time at the start of his career with us too, right? Yeah, yeah. He also had a cracking afro and there aren't enough um afros in, in um <laughs> football. So um Well Fellaini's got seven of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Fellaini might end up end up when at Spurs in January. When he comes to Spurs then we shut can up, judge him shut on his up, shut up, joking. shut up, shut up. Man. No, no, no. Alright, but uh-huh. no. Ben Davis for you, Bex, left back. Yeah, no, I'll go with that, actually. That's quite... Specific. Really? Well, what, ahead, yeah, of, I, ahead of Pete, Danny Rose? Yeah, well... Yeah, but Rose not, isn't a flash in the pan, but he yeah. had, like, two outstanding seasons. And for consistency, Ben Davis has been better. So if you were to spread those performances out over, the like, the four years, say, that they've been both been at the club, then you would pick Davis for his consistency rather than two good seasons from Danny Rose and the rest of the time him being shit and gobby and you know and whilst that Dave Hugo will always be on his credit he does as we've already discussed have a lot to debit which is mainly his ability to gob off and that's pissed off a lot of fans me as well in the past alright fair enough Um, I would uh... alright no we'll, 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 we'll go with Ben but there might be reason to revisit that position possibly um when we talk about the center backs um so center back pairing um we've got a choice of i'll just rattle a few names uh, michael dawson Eunice <laughs> Eunice kabul um Kulka, uh ledley king ledley king because he was still playing 2010 2012 um uh jan vertonghen toby alavard uh fazio chiriches fazio chiriches <laughs> fuck me <laughs> sanchez foyth yep yeah, so we all know where this one's going then. Well, I think they, I think it's it, it's really <laughs> down to three players. It's, like, <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's it's two out of three, surely. You no, got you got you got to have you got to have Yan and Yan and Toby. Ledley, did, Ledley, Ledley didn't play enough. If he played okay. more in this decade, he might get a shout. So you wouldn't. I was so I was thinking 
this is where my revisit left back option. I was thinking you put La- Jan at left back, which you know he can he can do a good job. I'm talking about peak Jan, um, and he can even push forward, etc. And then you play Toby and Ledley at the back. I wouldn't want to do that just to fit in Ledley. I just think okay. I, I think, think it, the, I think Jan the pre good. yeah the previous decade was Ledley's yeah okay fair enough all right so Jan and Jan and Toby. Um, Peak Jan, Peak Toby, and then the midfield. Now there, are, I think there are two, but sort of team I had in mind. I'm not going to re- reveal any names, but I, but I, I, you can go over a four four two, and then play two out on out wingers potentially, um, or maybe do something else and go with a four three three. But it, I suppose it depends on the players. Um, well, the formation gets figured out after we pick the players. Okay. Right? players. All right, fair enough. Okay, so midfield option. So um, we've got the likes of Dembele, Modric, Eriksson, Scott Parker. Um, uh, I'm trying to think who else. Um, Sandro. Um, uh, Palacios, Wilson Palacios. Um, who else? Wan- who else Wanyama. Wanyama, Dyer. I mean, Wanyama, Peak Wanyama, Dyer, Winks. Um, I can't think of anyone, anybody else. Who's, who's, who's the little Who's the little midget that we sent to Swansea? The little one, Tom. Tom Carroll. Tom Tom yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hang on a minute. Can, <laughs> we, put, can we put it? Can we put in Josh on him just to make Beg happy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> but and then also, um, so somebody you did miss out then? Did you miss out Bentaleb intentionally? Jab. Oh fuck yeah no I didn't and Mason. and Mason and Mason yeah no yeah. those two no they they the twenty whatever it was fourteen fifteen Poch's first season they were they yeah. were vital cogs in that um, I've not mentioned any wide players yet in that I mean we, if we're going to put wide players then Bale Lennon Chadley Bent, Chadley Bentley and G God and G yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is we didn't really if you're going to talk about if we're talking about 442 we didn't really play we haven't for a long time you've got to go back to Harry Redknapp the last time we played with proper sort of you know like a Bale and a Lennon um we haven't played with wingers for a while um all right so you've got to pick some players out of that pool so I don't see why you wouldn't have Modric at his absolute peak Agreed. Aside from the fact that he was... I'm on a whiny little shit and wanted to go to Chelsea. Um, mm-hmm. When he was on form, he was amazing. Yep, no, agree, totally. Mark? No, I'm going gonna, gonna, I'm gonna to be outvoted on this one because, for me, Modric wasn't half the player at Tottenham that he became at Madrid. And for Croatia, um, for me, I would have... Dar and Dembele in the middle because they're the best partnership. Yeah, we've but we get very, to... we've what? very rarely had partnerships in the middle, and we're desperate for a midfield midfield partnership right now, as it happens. But yeah, I just I would pick either one of those two over Modric because we're actually successful with them in the team too, or moderately successful. I I got a feeling this is going to be the bit where it, where there's going to be a bit a bit of disagreement and we might not reach any consensus. I would go, I'd, so I'd go with I t- totally agree with Bex. I'd go for Modric. I think he certainly went on to become even better at Madrid, Modric. But he, I thought he was still a very good player for us. I'd go with Modric, Dembele, Pete Dembele, um, and I would play. My initial thing was put, to put Ericsson in there and to put a three of those, but they, then there isn't really a ball winner. And I would probably put Victor Wanyama, 16-17. Yeah. And this and this particular, my three, so Modric, Wanyama and uh, Dembele, would mean we wouldn't play with wingers and would play with a sort of three attacking players. Um, but, yeah... If you're, go- if you're going with Bex, if you're going with Wanyama as well, so we've both of us gone with Modric and Wanyama. Mm-hmm. Um, and but who Dom- did you get? Who- yeah, Don Bale. Why wouldn't you? And who who did who who was yours, Mark? Dyer and Dyer and Bale. All right. So, but you would you go then go with what wingers? Yeah. 
being Blen and Bale? Yeah. Okay. All right. Bale, Sonny, and Kane. Well, that's, we, that, we, that's the lines I'm thinking on, Bex. So I'm thinking Bale, Sonny, and Kane as a front three, if you yeah. like, and then the yeah. f- and a and a free and a midfield free support um, of Modric, Dembele, and um, what's his name, Wanyama. Which would exclude the likes of Ericsson, for example, in Delhi. What about Bale? Kane and Van der Vaart just behind. Or leave out Ale, Son- or, or Ali. And leave out Sonny. Yep. Yeah. You're I'll a defer- heathen. I'll defer to Beck Specs. Uh, he's, he's just got no taste, quite frankly. Because as much as I like Delhi, <laughs> so why would you not put Sonny in the squad? Yeah, because uh, Sun Sun is too late. Uh, Time's up. Sun, no. Sun is a two games in five player. <laughs> <laughs> too, yes, too much. Yeah, Ali's been missing for like two and a half fucking years, man. He's still Mark, got really? more. He's still he's still got more to his game than Sun. He can pass the ball better than Sun. Nah. Yeah. He don't give the sunny, ball away. Sunny just spreads joy. Too much hesitation and repeti- repetition, Mark. So I'm gonna go with back to Sunny. <laughs> um, sunny. So I'm sunny. Glad you're all the way in the states and you can't come and get me. <laughs> sunny. Sunny Bale and Kane, and I, and I, and, I've, and I'm gonna go with the midfield three of Modric. Dembele. Well, one of yours gets in there, Mark. So Dembele, and and I'll go with Wanyama ahead of Dyer. Um, but there, that that would leave out. I think it, the, I the back four is easier. Players, yeah, it would leave out players like Van der Vaart, and why? And he was so valuable to us. Mm. And Delhi. Yeah. And Eriksson. And, and so they, these kind of questions are always really, really hard. Mm. Why would you want to leave those guys out? I mean, quite a lot of the defence you could happily never hear of again, but. Players like that, they are they've been massive for us. Crouch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> oh, I like Peter Crouch. On coming up, uh, come on the bench, bring him on. Him and yeah, Defoe. See. I, I mean, hated yeah. it when he was it. I hated it when we bought him. I was so glad when we sold him. Pavlichenko. But Defoe, not even got a bench. No. Poor Did Defoe. Pav- Defoe was good, but. But I'll look take, at what he did. I'll take. Us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Keane did more than Defoe did for us. Yeah, exactly. Not even mentioned. So. Well, he's not in this decade, is he? Who? Were they not just? Keane. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was just about. Yeah. 2010. He he left and come back. Left and came back. Yeah, it was yeah, a little bit. A dream. So when yeah. did Berbatov go? 2008. Same same yeah. summer. Same summer as yeah, uh, yeah 2008. But okay. he didn't come back. Um. Right, so who would be the skipper of this team? Thing is, you've both omitted Ledley. Does it even matter? We could ju- just to be annoying. We could just pick Hugo again. No. So I know no, how. Everybody, don't everybody. like it. No, no. <laughs> Who's the best captain and we've had in the last ten go, years? Anyway. Um, Who's, Who's the best, best captain? We've uh, had. So if we had, well, we've had Ledley. Probably we've Daw- had probably Dawson. Dawson. Dawson, yeah, but he's probably not the, the team. best. No, but he's probably the best captain we've had in the past probably. decade, right? Yeah, maybe, don't know. Do- we've had two. We've had Dawson. We've had um, Ledley King. We've had Kabul at one point. We've had um, <laughs> <laughs> we had Hugo. We've had Kane, um, and I think at various points, Dyer. yeah. And- yeah, and Jan and to- we definitely and Jan, Jan as well. Danny Rose as well. Skipper. Yeah. A game. A yeah. Cup game. Yeah. Let's just also give it to Kane. Let's just, just just give it to Kane. Just give it to Kane. He's he's been the player of the decade. He's yeah. been the the home yeah, home boy. Just sense. give it to him. Doesn't mean yeah. anything. Um, and the manager, uh, presumably Pochettino. Well, it's a toss between Poch, Jose, and um, Harry. A D B. It's pretty pretty amazing that we're we're not, we're not having a list. No. That's it. We we'll go with Sherwood. <laughs> Harry and Sherwood, dream team. Run around, it's run it. around, lads. Kick it about. If it was if it wasn't for Pochettino, we'd be naming a, probably another two other managers in yeah. this conversation. So what we can do, right, to get so as width, we get um, Sherwood managing the team, 
and we stick Carl Walker, we move him from right back and we stick him on the right wing or wherever, or central midfield. Where did he play against? Was it Chelsea? There was a game that Sherwood stuck him out, out completely out of position. Yeah. Oh. Moments <laughs> like that you, you remember. <laughs> you try to erase from the memory in the ranks and they suddenly come back. Right, um, we've been blabbering for a bit longer than... Um, probably for about four years longer than we should have. Um, right, um... This was the final podcast of 2019. Um, the next podcast um, we'll be recording probably will be a week today after the Borough game at some point. Um, I've not decided when and who and what and all of that shite. Um, until then, all that's left for me to say is um, thank you, Bex. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Um, and a happy new year to both of you. Thank you, you too. And, of course, to all our li- listeners. And until next time, the future's bright, the future's lily white. Good night. Why our lane has seen its pain, it's at its low tonight. We fought our team through thick and thin and all those glory nights. And when the game is done, we'll sing a song and talk it out all night. Hey! Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, don't be so bloody slow. You are the first team, the last team, my dreams have ever seen. Pull on that lily white and run on to that green. Oh, we've seen them come, we've seen them go, the names up on our shirt. Gods have failed as men are hailed and faces in the dirt. Now gather round and sing it out and we'll talk out over her.